Hi guys, thanks for stopping by today. Now just recently, Printers Jack sent me some sublimation ink and some sublimation paper. First they sent me the blue back. It's kind of a weird size, 8.3 by 11.7. And then they sent me your standard 8.5 by 11 with the pink back. Now the sublimation ink that they sent to me has the openings that are compatible with the eco tanks. So for example, here's the yellow ink. I've put most of it in a printer already. But with these bottles, you do not have to use syringes. So this is a big plus in my book. I know it's more expensive, but to me it's well worth it. The other thing is, you can keep these bottles, and then when you order refills, order the less expensive bottles, pour the new ink into these, and then you can use these to add future ink into your machine. So with this ink, you get your four basic colors, your black, cyan, magenta, and yellow. And then with the paper, you get 100 sheets. So I printed out two images, and of course, they are mirrored, so they look backwards, and especially this one, since it's a word. I printed the word nurse. I'm going to put that on a canvas board. And then I printed this flower to put on some polyester fabric. I wanted to see if they work well on both hard surfaces and fabric. Now to prep my canvas board, I have this thin lamination film. This is a 1.5 mil thick. It is very thin. That's what I prefer because it takes on the texture of whatever you're adding it to. And then for the flower, I just have this polyester fabric. And I'm not really going to do anything with this. I'm just testing out the ink. So let's move over to the heat press and we'll get this lamination film on our canvas board. Now, many of the things that I'm using, including the ink, I'll have links for these things. If you use my Amazon links, I do receive a small commission for that, and I really appreciate that, so thank you so much if you can use those. There is no extra cost to you for that. To get my canvas board ready, I'm going to go ahead and place that on my heat press with a Teflon sheet. Then I'm just laying my lamination film over it with some excess on the sides, and I'm gonna tape that down with some heat tape. Now when I do this, I wanna make sure the lamination film is pulled fairly tight. I guess I'm not stretching it or anything, I'm just making sure it's laying flat on the board. Now I'm going to place another Teflon sheet on top that protects my heat press and then I'm going to press it at 300 degrees for 15 seconds. Then I'll check it. Now there was a little bit of lamination film that was going to be touching my heat press platen, so I got a second Teflon sheet just to protect it. Now I want to check and make sure that's adhered fairly well. This is going to go back under your heat press for 45 more seconds once you put your image on it. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want to make sure it's done fairly well. The other thing is, now I'm going to go ahead and cut the film somewhat close to the board. I'm leaving maybe an eighth of an inch or so. I'm going to go ahead and move that off camera so I can finish cutting that off. Okay, let me show you about how much is left. Just enough to kind of curve around it and adhere to the other side or adhere to the edges. Then I cut it pretty close on the corners. So I can do one of two things. I could tape it onto the back and press it from the back. But what I really like to do so what I really like to do, and you have to be kind of careful, now my heat press has a Teflon sheet on the bottom of it, but you take your canvas and you just kind of roll that lamination film around it.
and you can see how nicely that finishes it off. Now if you have a Cricut Mini Press, that would work well too. Now that we're going to be working with the sublimation ink, I'm going to go ahead and protect the pad of my heat press and my Teflon sheet with some butcher paper. Now I think I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of pieces of heat tape on this just to try to help it from ghosting. Now I'll go ahead and cover that back up with my butcher paper. Then I'm going to heat this for 45 seconds at 385 degrees. Okay, the colors on that turned out beautiful. Let me turn down that light so we can see it a little bit better. Now here's my fabric for my other experiment. Because moisture and sublimation do not mix well, I'm going to go ahead and pre-press this for 15 seconds. Now you want to let this cool a little bit because if you put your sublimation image on it and you don't have it quite in the right spot and you move it, you can cause some blurring. Then I also want to add some blowout paper beneath it to protect my Teflon sheet. Then here's my image. So another piece of blowout paper on top and then just for extra security, I'm going to add one more Teflon sheet. I'm going to press this 385 for 45 seconds. Okay, let's check that one out. I'm going to let that cool off just for a minute. Now when I'm taking layers off the top of something that's light like this, I like to put a little pressure down to hold it in place while I'm lifting the corner. Again, until this is cooled off, if you shift your paper, you can cause some blurring in this. So you want to make sure you lift straight up. So I'm holding some pressure down so I can grab the corner. That's just my blowout paper. And then once again, on the product itself, oh my Goodness, that is incredible. Now I do see one little speck of white where something weird happened, but the ink and the paper itself was amazing. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and print another one of those on my other printer using my Cosmos ink, and I'll press it and we'll compare. Okay, let's try this again. I have my blowout paper. Now, I have another piece of fabric I cut off and I accidentally got a little nick in it right there. This is just for testing purposes so I didn't want to waste any more fabric. Once again I'll pre-press this for about 15 seconds. Now this time I use the same paper, the pink backed printer's jack paper, and then this is the Cosmo Sync, which everybody loves, and I love it. But I want to see if the printer's jack compares well to this. I'm going to go ahead and use that same time and temperature. Go ahead.
go ahead and remove the blowout paper and then let's lift our design again being careful we don't slide it those are amazing results too you can't tell a lot here so let's move back over to my table and I'll show you the results all right let's compare the results they're both on the same exact type of polyester fabric cut from the same piece they were both printed on the printer's jack paper the one with the pink background this image I used printer's jack ink now you have to make sure it's the sublimation ink I used their updated version of the ink which is supposedly an improvement over the old ink I'll make sure I link to the correct ink that this is and then this is the cosmos ink and I am very pleasantly surprised with this ink this is gorgeous now one benefit about this ink is you can get it off of Amazon it qualifies for free shipping because it's more than $25 and if you have prime you can get it in just a couple days okay so that's an excellent outcome now let me show you the image on the canvas board that is so bright and vibrant now this is my first time to use this ink and I have fallen in love with it it did a great job so if you're on the fence about what type of ink to buy, watch a bunch of different videos. There's some great inks out there. But after doing this experiment, I'm very comfortable with this ink. Thanks so much for joining me and sticking it out all the way to the end. Until my next video. Bye-bye.